Chapter 6. 2 Samuel 6, 1-5. David fetches the ark from Kirjath Jearim on a new cart. 1. Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, see 2 Samuel 5, 1. The object of this second assembly was to commence a national movement for establishing the ark in Jerusalem, after it had continued nearly fifty years in the house of Abinadab, see on 1 Chronicles 13, 1. 2. From Baal of Judah, a very large force of picked men were selected for this important work lest the undertaking might be opposed or obstructed by the Philistines. Besides, a great concourse of people accompanied them out of veneration for the sacred article. The journey to Baal, which is related, 1 Chronicles 13, 6, is here presupposed, and the historian describes the course of the procession from that place to the capital. 3. They set the Ark of God upon a new cart, or a covered wagon, see on 1 Samuel 6, 7. This was a hasty and inconsiderate procedure in violation of an express statute, see on Numbers 4, 15 and see Numbers 7, 9, 18, 3. Second Samuel 6, 6-11. Used to smitten. 6-8. They came to Nacon's threshing floor, or Chidon's, 1 Chronicles 13, 9. The Chaldee version renders the words, came to the place prepared for the reception of the ark, that is, near the city of David, 2 Samuel 6, 13. The oxen shook it, or, stumbled, 1 Chronicles 13, 9. Fearing that the ark was in danger of being overturned, used sir, under the impulse of momentary feeling, laid hold of it to keep it steady. Whether it fell and crushed him, or some sudden disease attacked him, he fell dead upon the spot. This melancholy occurrence not only threw a cloud over the joyous scene, but entirely stopped the procession, for the ark was left where it then was, in the near neighborhood of the capital. It is of importance to observe the proportionate severity of the punishments attending the profanation of the ark and saw. The Philistines suffered by diseases, from which they were relieved by their oblations, because the law had not been given to them. 1 Samuel 5, 8-12 the Beth Shemites also suffered, but not fatally, 1 Samuel 6, 19, their error proceeded from ignorance or inadvertency. But used sir, who was a Levite, and well instructed, suffered death for his breach of the law. The severity of used sir's fate may seem to us too great for the nature and degree of the offence. But it does not become us to sit in judgment on the dispensations of God, and, besides, it is apparent that the divine purpose was to inspire awe of his majesty, a submission to his law, and a profound veneration for the symbols and ordinances of his worship. 9, 10. David was afraid of the Lord that day, etc. His feelings on this alarming judgment were greatly excited on various accounts, dreading that the displeasure of God had been provoked by the removal of the ark, that the punishment would be extended to himself and people and that they might fall into some error or neglect during the further conveyance of the ark and saw. He resolved, therefore, to wait for more light and direction as to the path of duty. An earlier consultation by Aram would have led him right at the first, whereas in this perplexity and distress, he was reaping the fruits of inconsideration and neglect. 11. Abedadom the Gittite, a Levite, 1 Chronicles 15, 18, 21, 24, 16, 5, 26, 4. He is called a Gittite, either from his residence at Gath, or more probably from Gatharimon, one of the Levitical cities, Joshua 21, 24, 25. 2 Samuel 6, 12 19. David afterwards brings the ark to Zion. 12. It was told King David, saying, the Lord hath blessed the house of Obededom, and all that put any thon to him, because of the ark of God. The lapse of three months not only restored the agitated mind of the monarch to a tranquil and settled tone, but led him to a discovery of his former error. Having learned that the ark was kept in its temporary resting place not only without inconvenience or danger, but with great advantage, 
he resolved forthwith to remove it to the capital, with the observance of all due form and solemnity, 1 Chronicles 15, 1-13. It was transported now on the shoulders of the priests, who had been carefully prepared for the work, and the procession was distinguished by extraordinary solemnities and demonstrations of joy. 13. When they that bear the ark, had gone six paces, some think that four altars were hastily raised for the offering of sacrifices at the distance of every six paces, but see on 1 Chronicles 15, 26. 14. David danced before the Lord, the Hebrews, like other ancient people, had their sacred dances, which were performed on their solemn anniversaries and other great occasions of commemorating some special token of the divine goodness and favor. With all his might, intimating violent efforts of leaping, and divested of his royal mantle, in a state of undress, conduct apparently unsuitable to the gravity of age or the dignity of a king. But it was unquestionably done as an act of religious homage, his attitudes and dress being symbolic, as they have always been in oriental countries, of penitence, joy, thankfulness, and devotion. See on 1 Chronicles 15. 27. 17. They brought in the ark of the Lord, and set it in his place, in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. The old tabernacle remained at Gibeon, 1 Chronicles 16, 39, 21, 29, 2 Chronicles 1, 3. Probably it was not removed because it was too large for the temporary place the king had appropriated and because he contemplated the building of a temple. 18. He blessed the people, in the double character of prophet and king, see 1 Kings 8, 55, 56. See on 1 Chronicles 16, 2. 19. Cake of bread, unleavened and slender. A good piece of flesh, roast beef. 2 Samuel 6, 20-23. Mihau's barrenness. 20 to 22. Mihau. Came out to meet David, etc. Proud of her royal extraction, she upbraided her husband for lowering the dignity of the crown and acting more like a buffoon than a king. But her taunting sarcasm was repelled in a manner that could not be agreeable to her feelings while it indicated the warm piety and gratitude of David.